Today, my topic is about implementing workshop strategies, part one. So, adults who engage in learning for personal enrichment and professional enhancement, suggesting that non traditional education is more popular in the second half of the 20th century. So, according to Fleming, that is why we should include、uh, a workshop in the adult continuing education for adult learners. So, question about workshops. Is number one, what are they? Number two, what purposes and needs they meet? And number three, what can students expect from them? According to Fleming, the workshop is to develop their individual competence of participants within a particular well defined area of need. And、uh, workshop is to emphasize the transfer and, and application of new learning. And workshop is to provide for hands on. Approaches, for example, in laboratory, and workshop is to design to be highly interactive. Workshop is to support participants、uh, with learning from one, an- one another. Workshop is to use the technology that is a particular effect on、um, the workshop size. Okay, so Fleming also point out several issues regarding the workshop, which he is described throughout his articles. And today I'm going to address only two issues. But first of all, let me、um, show you the, a few issues that Fleming has、um, put on his, in his articles. So he was、uh, talking about issues such as、uh, workplace planning,、uh, understanding motivation and culture in the workshop design, like、um, issues such as group learning, issues such as negotiation power dynamics, issues such as residential workshop,、uh, distance workshop. Uh, also about the workshop evaluation, like、uh, including the old means and the uh, uh, new um, wisdom. And he, he also mentioned about the、uh, a new direction for the future workshop. Okay, in part one today, as I said before, I'm going to talk about two issues of、uh, this topic.、Uh, one first issue I'm talk- going to talk about is the workshop planning. Okay. So, workshop planning requires the ability, such as number one, able to read the situations, planning, planner complaints, and number two, is to adopt the strategies that promote responsible learning and planning characterized by democratic participation, political awareness, and also ethical sensitivity.、Uh, number three, able to deal with asymmetrical power relations among the stakeholders. Okay, so now we need to know.、Uh, in order to know the issues about workshop planning, we not need to study about workshop planning models. So models like include to honor the learners' experience, perspectives, and expectations.、Uh, models about、uh, the recognizing the importance of diversity, and models about involve the stakeholders in planning.、Uh, also understanding the importance of the context in which planning occurs. Uh, the, to base the programs on the needs of learners, and to、uh, models about the clarifying the aims or goals of the workshop, and also models about incorporating、uh, workshop processes that、uh, activity involve the learners, and also to、uh, models about choosing facilitators or instructors, and instructional resources with great care, and.、Um, There are plenty of them, so I still got three more,、uh, four more to go.、Uh, also, model about to promote the application of learning as a central team. A model about attending carefully to the administration, administrative details, to care for the physical and emotional needs of the workshop participants, and to assess the program outcomes in addition to the learner. Workshop planning requires elements of planning. Okay, we learned before is about models. Uh, workshop models,、um, pl- uh, planning model. Now we are learning. Next one is about workshop planning elements. Okay, so what are the elements? First one is to analyze planning context and client system. The second one is to justify and focus planning. And the third one is to clarify intended outcomes. And the fourth is to formulate instructional plan. And number five is to develop summative evaluation plan. So to understand and concern other complex range of workshop planning issues, the third dimension of workshop planning, according to Sok, which comprises of、uh, technical issues, social political issues, and also ethical issues. Okay. Now look at the diagram here as I、um, 
going to explain to you what are those issues. So technical, uh, about technical, what do you mean by technical issues? Like it is of course on the service of the model and uh, it's rece to receive the, it receive the most attention and concerns uh, to practitioners. So next, what about the social political issues? So social political issue is to analyze planning context and client system. And it is to justify and focus on the planning. It is the interplay of power and interest in the planning. It is the complexities of involving other people in the planning process. Finally, I'm going to talk about the ethical one. Of course, number one, it is the deepest level of planning. And two, it is concerning about ethical aspects of planning. And number three, it is focusing on discussion on and reflecting on the moral justification for what we are doing or should not be doing. Okay? Now, number four, it needs experience planner to recognize what, whether it is necessary to pose a question related to the ethics of planning and then know how to arrive at a satisfactory level or answer. Okay, now second strategies, uh, sec sorry, second issues I'm going to talk about is the understanding of uh, motivation and culture in the workshop design. According to Rostowski in 1997, he quote, Designing workshop with a motivational framework for culturally responsive teaching is a way to create learning experiences where inquiry, respect, and opportunity for full participation by diverse people in the norm. Alright? So Rodowski suggests the four motivational conditions of the framework for worship design. Number one is to establish inclusion. Number two is to develop attitude. Number three is to enhance meaning. And number four is to engender the competence. Okay? After we know the above four conditions, then we only we can only plan the programs for the workshop. So next, we need uh, to clarify the purpose of the workshop, and also we need to understand the workshop participants' knowledge, skills, and perspectives. And also we need to know to design the workshop from a motivational perspective, like using um, guiding questions and strategies. For example, questions, uh, example to include the. Uh, Inclusion. So questions such as how do I create or affirm a learning atmosphere so the participants will feel connected and feel respected. Okay, this is for the beginning of the uh, uh, workshop. So for next one is for strategies. For example, you ask questions like provide a variety of processes and materials uh, used for learning. Uh, this is called motivational strategy. Uh, also, for example, strategies categorize condition uh, according to the uh, motivational condition, like as to establish inclusion, we, which I have talked about a little bit before, uh, which is to promote connection, draws intrinsic, uh, both, uh, draws both intrinsic motivation. So, like multi-dimensional sharing, for example, during introduction exercise uh, to social activities. Uh, strategies categorized according to the motivational conditions such as um, developing the attitude. For example, sexual harassment. So in the workshop, what causes it? So then develop points of views of the participants and then um, to respect those views. Okay. Also, make the learning activity and irresistible to learn. Uh, for example, making the interest in motivation a priority. Questions such as, um, is it safe? Will it lead to uh, uh, a successful ending or activity? Uh, is it interesting? Uh, is it personally relevant? For example, prior participant uh, experiences, concerns, or interests, etc. So, strategies categorized according to the motivational condition also use relevant learning models. For example, uh, share the experiences of the past participants who successfully finished particular research methods. Okay? And to enhance meaning, like you searching, evaluating, constructing, creating, or organizing for the real meanings. To pose a problem, example, how to promote higher education to low income students. I like to create a stimulation like learning procedures such as uh, role playing, uh, games, or exercise. Okay? Um, to engender competence like giving feedback on the performance through assessment that is uh, authentic for so us to realize the effectiveness of new learning. Okay? 
Strategies categorized according to the motivational condition also use performance assessment. Uh, that is to conduct a real life assessment. Real life, real life, uh, sorry, real life needs of a participant. Example, uh, response to a, a research uh, description, uh, response to a problem a current event, and also response to a news or video analysis. All right. Uh, use feedback such as uh, teacher comments about the uh, emerging skills, written notes on an assignment. Feedback also like enhances motivation, uh, understanding and maintaining efforts through realistic goals. Okay, let's finish my today's topic. Now we come to the conclusion section now. In today, um, we learned that worship is to number one, to develop the uh, individual competence of participants within a, a specific well-defined uh, area of need. Number two, to emphasize the transfers and application of new learning. And number three, is to provide hands-on practice, for example, laboratory or laboratory number four is to design to be highly interactive uh, number five worship is to support participants learning from one another uh, number six worship is to use of technology that has particular effect on workshop size all right now third dimension of the workshop planning consists of the technical social political and ethical spectrums remember the diagram i show you yeah uh, there are four motivational conditions of the framework for worship design. Uh, they are number one to include inclusion, to uh, establish inclusion, and number two is to develop attitude, and number three to enhance meaning, and number four is, is to engender competence. Okay, after we know the above four motivational conditions, then we can only plan the uh, programs for workshop. Okay, let's conclude my today's topic of implementing worship strategies part one. My next topic will be implementing worship strategies part two. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening and goodbye.